Hello, Smite fans and Smite viewers, and welcome to this very special broadcast of the Xbox Pro League Semi Finals. Now, this Semi Finals match will determine who will be eliminated from the Xbox OPL and who will progress to the Grand Final to verse the Almighty Citadel Gaming, who are currently 14 0, completely undefeated in the Xbox Pro League. Pretty excited to see this matchup between Incept and Example. My name is Parathus, and casting alongside me today is my good friend Nightfall. Now, how excited are you to be casting the first ever Oceanic Xbox Pro League on Twitch? I am actually honored because this is the first Oceanic Pro League cast, like you just said. It's it's massive. And these boys haven't been able to have the uh, the replays being seen at all. You, you have to have a PC to be able to watch replays on the Xbox. It's a bit unfortunate, but here we are, fortunately, being able to cast the first one. I'm super excited. Exactly right. And we're just going to go ahead and jump into our picks and bans here between Example and Incept. Now, a very fun fact that I've been told about these two teams is Example and Incept are pretty much the most even team that you'll ever see ever competing against each other. It's a 50-50 matchup between each other as Guan Yu is the first ban. So expect game number three from these two teams. Yeah, is that mid-game strong point from uh, Guan Yu just, just being eliminated there. We see him a lot on PC as well, and it seems these guys know exactly what to do, exactly what to ban, as Athena is banned away too. The CC reduction being a lot harder to come across now in this meta, so uh, they know exactly what to do uh, once again. Exactly right. The global ultimate being able to help your team from any side of the map. Speaking of globals, Thor banned on the side of example. Massive global ultimate being able to dive down from the gold fury or the fire giant pit and dunking onto anyone, pretty much guaranteeing a kill at level 5. Got that early game power as well. If you want to invade, you get that 15 extra physical power from the passive per player around you, up to a maximum of 3, so 45 extra power, depending on how many people are, people are around you. It's pretty massive. Al Kuang banned away, so I've heard someone by the name of AQ is very good at this Al Kuang. And Zekka. Zekka as well, pretty Zekka much a meta-defining well. god in the jungle role. Al Kuang, he set the meta, word is, he is, you know, setting the bar for Al Kuang. And Raven locked in for the side of, exa of example, and Chiron and Kepri for Incept. Yeah, Chiron and Kepri are a massive lane here, as Chiron can basically not die with as, as soon as <laughs> they hit level 5. He can stay alive and deal damage, but as long as Kepri puts his ultimate on him, he can come back easy peasy. And as long as Chiron can uh, secure a kill in that ultimate as well, it will heal him for as much damage as he deals. As we see Gib and Hunbats, both very good picks now in this meta. Hunbats, of course, with that uh, Fear No Evil. He's got the mobility and the power as well. Gib with that uh, Blink Cataclysm is huge for the CC, as well as the overpowered Gib Shield to cleanse the CC. Scylla, the next one coming through. Very interesting Scylla pick, especially for the third seat here. I would have liked to see maybe a Yarnus or an Isis that we typically see on uh, on PC, but maybe this is a secret uh, Xbox strat picking Scylla here for the mid lane, and Hoi banned away on uh, for Incept. Yeah, I'm kind of keen... I uh, I'm really keen to see what the next ban is. Uh, Isis. Okay, there we go. Isis? Interesting. I would have rather pick it up for the side of example there rather than ban it away because the mid laner was already picked for Incept. So, a bit of a throwaway ban there. Yeah, a bit of a weird one. They might be looking to play, I don't know if Incept are known for playing Isis in that solo lane, um, but Soul banned on the side of Incept. Uh, can be played in the mid lane and the ADC, so good ban from Incept. Very strong with a stellar burst. Indeed, that that ultimate as well is really good for zoning. Her auto attack, auto attack damage is really good as well, and makes up for a, a lack of DPS uh, from the team composition if you want to go for a more bursty ADC. And Yanis is the next ban away. Huge global presence. Uh, both teams not liking any global presence at all as well as that burst potential with the portal and unstable vortex combo for mana is the next pick and he's huge in this meta oh yeah he's huge very little baby but once he goes into that colossal fury ultimate he does quote unquote turn huge medusa and agni locked in for example so that's their adc duo lane with geb and medusa and agni in the mid lane i love those rain fire bombs 
I like how they left both of their carries for the very last pick so that they could get the most amount of uh, counter potential in their picks as can be Medusa is great at stopping uh, Ocaron because of that ultimate that Petrify indeed is very very strong our next uh, pick is going to be Bastet though great mobility and great at shutting down characters like Agni because the cats actually the cats go through the, the path of flames when he dashes away, don't they? Yeah, yep, they do. So I take uh, that back immediately. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I yeah. like the best at being able to lock down the Agni. And we're just going right into our game after our picks and bans. Now, we're going to be seeing... Alrighty, moving on into our game, we have for you Incept versus Example. Now... Let's go ahead and introduce our two teams here for the first streamed Xbox semi-finals game. This is a best of three series, guys, between Example and Incept. As I said before, expect this game to go to the third match nightfall. Now, on the left side of your spectator, you are fighting under the blue health bars. We have Humbats in the jungle. AQ is going to be playing him. Why so salty is Geb in that duo lane. Medusa as well is pairing with him. That is going to be Chappy. Mincer in our solo lane playing the Raven, and our mid lane for today is Panic on the Agni. On the Chaos side of the map, that is going to be... I can't actually tell. Is that... It's, that's... In... Example. Yeah. Isn't yeah. it? No, it's Incept. No? God. Incept, oh, yeah. Perfect. Bad, <laughs> Already. Off to a great start. We got Edison in the AD carry role on Chiron, and our mid laner is going to be Yarpy on Scylla. Dostiny is going to be our support, Kepri, and our jungler will be Haytons on Bastet, followed by Mr. Dank Bacon as Vamana in the solo lane. Now, a lane that you want to really look out for Nightfall is definitely going to be uh, the, the two ADCs versing each other, Edison and Chappie. Now, I've heard Chappie is an extremely aggressive ADC, loves to frontline, does so much damage in these team fights, which is why I've liked him picking this Medusa, being able to just petrify and then just pretty much everyone whereas edison typically likes to play very safe gods tends to clear wave and then you know be under tower play those safe picks so i really like that they're pairing the duo lane around uh, edison's play style picking the kepri and quote unquote chiron the safest god in the game right now yeah the kepri pick is going to be very very good he's got great engage and he's got great safety as well as uh nothing too aggressive is coming out as we see the hun bats and the raven are going for these mid camps and we see that quite uh frequently actually now considering um how aggressive people can play and the the fact that mid camps are now at uh, 10 seconds spawning it's it's extremely frequent to see i don't know how to put it any better than that now in our mid lane panic uses his dash to clear the wave there but bastet doing a bit of damage with that uh i can't even think of the word right now the uh the the deep war I'm, i can't even think of the word yeah deep war is and left side mid camps getting picked up being contested over here mincer is already taken extremely low over here in the solo lane on raven as well interesting up against that uh, Vimana, of course, Vimana's got great wave clear with that Umbrella Rang and Armored Umbrella. Clear the wave very, very quickly and with a Blue Stone as well. AQ taken extremely low here in the mid lane by Bastet as well. Great early game uh, here from Bastet. Now, sit here and, sitting here over in the joy lane as we are on auto direct, so the spectator might be a bit iffy for you guys at home watching, but don't mind that. But, I mean, this duo lane, they're already pushing up. They have the Kepri and they have the Chiron. And they just have one of, the, one of the safest lanes right now. I mean, I don't think that the Medusa and the Geb can really do much other than get pressured under tower. Yeah, indeed. Geb not known for his wave there. Certainly not, especially against a Chiron. Uh, excuse me, a Kepri-Chiron combo. As there's the pull and a lot of damage, but the Geb shield will keep him safe. And uh, a lot of teams opting to not be very aggressive this game. They, they really just want to stay just at each other's pace. Yeah, yeah. And, and like you said at the start of the game, both of these teams are very even. No one could predict the outcome of this match, so um, but we're seeing it unfold. Yeah, exactly right. Uh, not really any interesting builds. Oh, over in our solo line, however... We see uh, Mincer getting extremely low, Dank Bacon already applying the pressure, hitting level 5, so he's going to have that Colossal Fury. Interesting to see that he didn't Tower Dive at that point, as um, 
uh, Mincer is he is level five, but I would have liked to see that Colossal Fury and just dive the tower as he's still at about a quarter HP, so he might look to do it this wave. Yeah, indeed. I mean, maybe he was on cooldown. That's the only reason I can see uh, why Dank Bacon didn't go under tower there. Really, really strange. It, it was definitely worth two tower dive, uh, but now both uh the mid laner and the jungler and the solo laner for uh for example are just gonna go back and collect their buffs there is no aggression whatsoever here three minutes into the game they like poke each other out and that's what the solo laner does is just poke as much as possible but they're not getting too much damage down other than what we just saw we might see a bit of a contestion as his right side mid camps are up and available but it looks like uh, Yarpy and well both the Incept and Example mid laner and jungler is going to go do their reds. I, I would like to see a fight for this right side mid camps. Fear no evil along with the fire bombs from the Agni. It's it's so good for just massive CCs. We see a stun coming onto Hayden's in the mid lane. That's the overhand smash. It's not going to do too much damage as he is about half health. But I, I, wa I want to see a big contestion coming for these right side camps. Yeah, me too. I just want to see some aggressive plays. The early game here from uh, Incept is huge. They've got the Humbats, they've got the Agni as well. That burst potential with the Fear No Evil was absolutely insane. And they, it, they didn't even contest. I would have liked to see... I mean, Hayden's got half health from that fight, and then they let them pick up the right side mid camps, and now they're going to get the lefts for free. Bit of... I, I mean, the poke was there. They could have easily fought that. But, I mean, there's so much on the line for these two teams. They don't really want to be throwing uh, just at this early game. They don't want to really risk anything too much. As over in our solo lane, Dank Bacon still dominating this lane at level 7. Yeah, almost taking Mincer down once again. Uh, but Mincer, of course, very safe. The mana did go in to try and steal that one war, But, uh, unfortunately, did not have the wave clear. And, or, sorry, mistimed the waves meeting and wasn't able to do so. But Vamana, his wave glows are so strong. Oh yeah, exactly right. The Armored Umbrella, I think at about level 6, 7, starts to just clear the wave completely as well as he has that 3, so he can clear the wave even better. Level 7, should be looking to back now and finishing off a few of his items just so he gets that power spike. As he picks up that blue buff, he's pretty much completely full on health and mana at this point. And if he gets in trouble, as I said, he can just pop that Colossal Fury form get that healing, and then he's got the mana buff, so he can just sustain in lane for pretty much as long as he wants until he's ganked upon. Indeed. Now I'm looking over here at the duo lane, I really want to see some... some aggression, because they, they can do that. Oh yeah, The Medusa-Gib right. combo, early game, the wave clear from Medusa is great, they can poke it out. Gib can keep them safe, but Medusa still has that with the... Uh, with the Viper shot. And has got the text to try to get uh, the car on low, but they're just... It seems as though everyone is afraid to fight. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I would agree. I, I would like to see that example do go in, as I said. They have the Fino Evil. Uh, do they have the Blink on the Geb for the Cataclysm? Yes, they do, so we can even play aggressive with that as he's rotated over. Um, back still in his duo lane, I would like to see a, a Blink Cataclysm, Fino Evil... Or just some kind of big ultimates getting used up here for the first blood. Almost six and a half minutes in, still no first blood. Neither jungler has really opted to gank any lands. Yeah, I don't think why so salty has beat once this game. And if you're gonna oh, pick... over in our solo lane though, there's that colossal fury and the rain of fire over onto Dank Bacon. He is gonna walk straight under tower, very safe in that ultimate form, basically forcing out everyone to withdraw from that fight as we see Yarpy. Maybe looking to rotate over and catch someone off guard here. He's not going to be able to find it, unfortunately. And uh, that is the HP5 coming from Vamana, and that's the safe to pick. Is that ultimate is just so good. It gives you protections, health, and... Uh, not movement speed. I was about to say movement speed. But yeah, health and protections, and it's, it's huge. It makes your auto attacks AoE as well. So uh, just a bit of icing on the cake there. Big rotations over at these right mid camps as we see both the support jungler and mid over here in this mid lane. Still, Fear No Evil is down at this point, but that's a good damage coming right onto the side of AQ. He has no mana and he's forced to back out of that fight. Looks like again, uh, Incept getting both these mid camps for free at this point. Indeed, and I want to take a look at the graph so far because this game is a game of 
farming so far. Uh, Basically, yeah, so, it's patience and farming. Yeah, 600, 700 now for uh, Incep. So they've got a little bit of a lead, but it's not significant enough to make it. It's two wards per person. Uh, it's almost two, two wards in a bit. It's not that much. Uh, but the XP is still 1,000. Yeah, it's clear that we can see Example are still just a little bit behind. And that's that's honestly just because Incept have been picking up these mid camps. I do believe they picked up uh, five out of the six that have been up so far. Um, and that's just due to rotations. It's just the damage coming through from the Crush and the Razor Whip and d Claw combo from the Bastet. Still, any interesting builds you see on the board Nightfall, we see Doomorb picked up by the Scylla. Oh, uh, that's great, actually, because Doomorb at the moment... Uh, is so good, you want to pick it up on everyone. Almost, unless you know that you're going to die. Fortunately for Yapi, no aggressive plays whatsoever. So as a Scylla, you want to get online as soon as possible. You want to deal as much damage as possible because your early game is so weak. And with that Doom Orb, you can get there as early as possible. Was that just a steal from... Yep. From the fast steal and the blue buff? <laughs> no, that was, um... Uh, I do believe that that was from Dank Bacon, just using that three over the wall and getting it, and then Hayden's just jumped over, picked it up, and jumped straight back. Very safe is that pounce from Bastet. Soline, though, a bit of poke coming through from Dank Bacon and Minter, but there's a big rotation over in our mid camps as Hayden looks to do a lot of damage onto AQ. So what I just mentioned about Scylla being so weak early game is that... Oh, very nice dash from Panic. So... Scylla has not been tempted to be shut down at all yet, by example. They have not, not got, they have not spotted the weakness of Scylla's early game. They have not seen that their early game picking of mid and jungle of Agni and Hunbats, two of arguably the strongest uh, early game picks in the entire game for that synergy, and they're just not making use of it at all. I mean, on the side of Incept though, however, there are four beads. Even the support Kepri, Dostiny has picked up the beads instead of like a shell or a sprint or a, uh, or even a weakening that we would usually see on supports. But he, why do you reckon he's gone into the into the beads? I mean, he's very safe as is. He has that Scarra's Blessing, but still into the beads for the first uh, round. He's either scared of the Cataclysm or the Petrify or both. Uh, not very necessary at all because he's Kepri. He needs to mm, be true. able. He needs to have the shell, like you mentioned, or a sprint, something that is for the rest of the team and not for himself as the first uh, pickup of his relic. So, I'm not too sure why he he just seems a bit intimidated, I guess. Silla now finishing off her 50 stacks of that Doom Orb, as you were saying before. No one's really. Uh, targeting her in these in or oh, I, I would say these fights but not really there hasn't really been that many fights so she has those 50 stacks she has a lot of power on uh with that build so far and we might be seeing a rotation as Minta is looking over for the mid yeah he is indeed uh, they they have to shut down the Scylla otherwise they have to 50 stacks like, already at 11 minutes yeah cannot be emphasized enough how bad this is going to go. Actually, as we see, a fight is starting to break out. Chappie, will he be the first? Oh, there is the Fear No Evil. Can he go down? Eventually, Haytens will be able to secure first blood. Finally, here at 11 minutes. Nice Cataclysm. Stuns up four members. There's the uh, Kepri ultimate to revive Haytens as he jumps away. Nice play here by uh, the Incept. And now, example, are able to return the kill back on towards Haytens, who unfortunately was taken down there by... I can't see the Raven that is admits it. Dude, keeping track of everything at once on this new client is a bit <laughs> difficult as the fight continues, Parathus. Yarpy gets himself that kill onto Minter as he falls down. Now Dank Bacon is in hot pursuit of example Pink chasing him under this tier 1 tower. Good dash. Now Gold Fury getting started up for uh, example. Yeah, indeed. Panic. Will he be able to live? Yes, he does have that dash. Oh and no, Incept, not Example, Incept. I wish we were able to change the names, that would be True. great. Is this a Gold Fury? This is definitely yep. a Gold Fury, as uh, Incept are able to secure that one. Very nicely uh, picked up there, and a good recognition of 
seeing that example were behind they had act and that was just free now free there for incept and that's going to put them let's take a look at the graphs 3.1 k gold in the lead this is great for great them. for example no incept i keep i keep getting this confused <laughs> I know Example have like a red logo, that's why I'm just confusing them. But no, that is Incept on the red team, so they are that 3k gold ahead and 3.8k experience. Indeed, and now they can just snowball from here because the, the team comp is late game. They've got Scylla, they've got Chiron, they've got Bastet who can split push. Uh, they've got Vamana as well, and Kipri is always there for that ultimate if required. So even if Example do come back a little bit to try and... Uh, even if they come back a little bit, Incept will always have the upper hand from here on in, and only misplays will be able to... Um, to let Incept down. Lead. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> got it there eventually still yeah. i mean i don't really think that um incept can really throw at this point i mean uh, unless you said that they um they throw a team fight or they just do something wrong out of the ordinary yeah. but i mean they're playing so safe and they're picking fights when they know they can win as as we mentioned before they picked up that gold fury after only getting two kills so i mean incept are playing extremely safe but there's reasoning behind it, and the, the reason they're playing safe is that, you know, they can just win all the fights, and when they're playing safe, they can farm, and as you mentioned, they can just snowball from this point on. Indeed. I, I really want to see some more fights, because that was actually really good there by both teams. Um, oh, and there, was there a pluck there in the middle? There was AQ, but the Gib Shield does uh, keep him alive there. And I think the Gib Shield will be the saving grace for example here keep them alive but it won't uh stop them from dying uh as much as a kipri will oh big rotation over here in the mid lane as dawson might get caught out he has that 10 shadow fist just missing blink cataclysm right onto dank bacon overhand smash is gonna connect as i'm a monster onto aq double kill for yapi onto salty gonna get the double kill with the fear with the i'm a monster can he get the third he's gonna get a triple kill for yapi well played there by Yapi. Beautifully placed every single what time. Can he kill? get it? Yes, he does. Beautiful play there by Yapi. Continues to just destroy. Here comes Medusa though. Can he secure the kill? No. Chappie will do his best to try and return a kill. Not going to be able Great to secure petrify. it though. Good Petrify coming right onto Hayton's as he uses that perfectly timed Sanctuary to avoid any damage from that tower as he does get out of that fight. Great play! Coming through from Incept once again. Shoutouts to Yarpy there for getting a quadra kill. 5-0 at this point. Great play with the Omen once again, the triple kill, and then the crush over the wall. Just a perfect play, really, for Incept. Indeed. I mean, you couldn't have asked for a better, better way to go here in this mid-game. Scylla now with five kills with that Doom Orb. And as we said before, if you let Scylla get to that late game, she's just going to absolutely destroy. And we just saw the full potential of a Scylla. Unfortunately, not going to get a pentakill as uh, Chappie just came Chappie. over just a little bit late. Um, almost secured a kill though. Very close there by Chappie, but yep. uh, unfortunately wasn't able to do that. But now they have to keep track of the Aegis and the beads used by Incept. So that that is Zample's way of coming back in this. I want to see um, I want to see AQ really focusing out Yapi now. 5 and 0, 50 stacks on the Doom Orb for about 5 minutes here. Beads and the Sanctuary down, or the Purification and the Sanctuary down, now have changed it into Relics. I would really like to see a Fear No Evil and a Cataclysm just to shut down Yarpy. Level 17, it's just ridiculous how far ahead Yarpy is at the moment uh, compared to the other mid laner who is only level 13. That's a 4 level advantage. It's a crazy levels. lead for Incept. Oh my gosh, I need to... Uh, let's take a look Ooh, at the mid lane, however. Fear no evil right onto I'm a monster. That's going to be I'm a monster. He's not going to connect with anyone. Hayton's just gets out of there alive as he's trying to back off under that tier 1 tower. A lot of ultimates used on the side of Incept and Example. Nothing really coming out of it, however, Nightfall. No kills at all. They were looking for kills. Unfortunately, they weren't able to there, as it seemed like they were just a bit off synergy there. The communication was a little bit... Uh, yeah, just off, unfortunately. 
Yeah, and I mean, even if they use all of these ultimates, it comes down to, again, they have the Kepri on the side of Incept. And now they're looking right, Pluck onto Why So Salty. Crush is going to connect. It's going to do a bit of damage. But Dank Bacon might get caught out here as the Petrify comes down onto him. Red team are now backing away from the tier 2, but here comes Minter. 10 Shadow Fist is going to do a lot of damage onto Haytens, but it's not going to secure himself that kill. Now, uh, Incept are forced to back under their tier 1 tower, as example. Might have a little bit of a, a lead here as Gold Fury is coming up. Indeed it is. We'll see who is able to secure that one first. Mm. Yeah, so Incept are not, in, not at all in a position to secure that one, but if a Scylla ultimate can come through to maybe pick up a kill or even steal the Gold Fury, that would be huge for Incept, and they honestly might be able to close the game. I'm a monster over the wall. Didn't see if that one connected because auto direct is too OP at this point. Crush not going to do any damage to AQ. See somersaults out of that one. Gold Fury still up for contestion. I mean, Yarpy still at full health. He has doesn't have the armor monster after he just uses it. But it looks like Incept are going to get themselves the second Gold Fury of the match unless Chappy can contest here. I feel I need to explain myself when I say close the game. I mean, <laughs> at, the, at the moment there is kind of. There's very little ways for example to come back into this game, and if the Gold Fury is taken by Incept, then they'll be able to just snowball again and, and be able to close the game as Dank Bacon secures a kill onto Chappie. And that's the AD carry shut down once again. Completely shut down by that Armoured Umbrella. They do get the Gold Fury, and now they're looking... Oh, that's a good Capri ult right onto himself there. Colossal Fury right onto Why So Salty. Fear Not Evil used up to get that CC. Mega Minter gets himself the kill onto Dank Bacon. And that's another kill. Oh, Yarpy though, gets another return kill. Right back onto Minter after he got that kill. Slow coming onto Salty as he's diving away. Good stun right from the Agni there. Can we see any more kills coming through? Why so salty? Not gonna be able to down there as Scylla dashes forward. Bastet now just poking out, and this is Incept continuing their powerhouse mid game. Now going into the late game, actually, as Scylla. Pretty much, as almost 20 minutes. Have a look at Golden Hand. Scylla is sitting actually 1,600. She won't be able to finish that Rod of Tahuti just yet. She needs about a thousand more gold. I mean, look at her build so far, though. She has the Chronos Pendant. She has the Doom Orb still 50 stacks, 6 and 0, 19. Almost 20 minutes into this game, still has not been shut down yet, as she has the Sanctuary and the Purification. And of course, she has the Scarab's Blessing backing her from Dostiny. So, she's. Could you say she's pretty much unkillable at this point? She's so far ahead. Yeah. I mean, unkillable is the perfect way to put it, as you as you said as well, Kepri with that ultimate. And I feel like all of Example are just going to die to that ultimate if they allow Yarpi to stay alive. It's so hard to shut him down when there's a Vamana on your carries, there's oh, yeah. a Bastet on your carries as well. And then Kyron's just dealing DPS to your frontline, trying to get to the Scylla. Not a lot of options here, for Example. They have to try and... Play defensive, they need to secure their own jungle, their ward vision is lacking, extreme, extremely lacking at the moment. Uh, and maybe hope for a fire giant catching uh, Incept off guard. This is why I would have liked to see, example, picking up an Isis instead of banning it away um, from Yarpi. Uh, if yeah. they had an Isis at this point, they really could be contesting. Granted, even if they were this far behind, Isis still does so much damage and can objective secure with the circle of protections, even if she's behind. So, I mean, that would have been a much better pick than the Agni at this point, in my opinion, as it looks like Incept are going for this tier 1 tower, looking for a big fight here. Yeah, they are indeed. Nick is sitting at the back. Does he have the rain fires to try to clear the wave? He does. And Yarpi does get taken down to roughly about 60% HP. That'll be a lot easier to try to kill him now. Uh, where is the jungler AQ? He needs to get a perfect... He needs perfect to get fear no a evil perfect fear Cataclysm no evil. combo. If yeah. they get that in this fight, they can definitely win the fights, no doubt about it. However, Scylla, everyone on the side of Incept has their purification up at this point, and the Sanctuary. Kepri still has his Scarab's Blessing as well, so even if they do get that perfect combo that Example really need in this fight, I don't even think it can pay off for them that much. 
No, I mean, the gold lead's sitting now at uh, 8,400. Wow, that is massive here. Ooh. 21 minutes into the game. Uh, it's, it's, it seems like it's too big. And now it's just Ooh. a matter of time before the game's closed. Good petrify onto two members. It looks like Dank Bacon stuck in this tower using that Colossal Fearing right onto Mincer. Mincer still doing damage and keeping him in that big form. Yarpy and Dank Bacon and Dawson here about half health. They really need to get out for this. It was a good defense from example, but can they turn anything from it? Yeah, they really need to pressure here. That was actually a really good fight. And now Vamana with that ultimate down is not going to be too much of a threat. Yarpy as well taking extremely low. If he ults, he will stand still for far too long. And if he stands still, that leaves him vulnerable to uh, to being killed. But uh, how many ultimates were used actually there by the side just of the example? Just three. Oh, by example, just the one. It was the uh, Medusa uh, Chappy using that uh, Petrify right onto okay. two members. But, yeah, that's, um, this is I actually mean, they can still really fight. good. For example, beads down on both Chiron and the Scylla. It could be a really good fight. For example, if they take this lead, they're splitting out at this point after that fight. They really need to take that advantage that they just got from that fight they know that these beads are down and just really go for a t1 tower really any side is still all towers are up um for example to take down they are indeed and the first place they need to go is that solo lane so that they can have yep. a more pressure around the fire giant which should be contested very shortly here um if that tower is up then it'll be a lot harder for uh example to try to aggress as it uh, Incept have that uh, that territory to fall back to. And now it looks like their lead is almost out for them as we see Incept aggressing this tier 2 tower. Yarpy doing a bit of damage with that crush, gets hit with the 10 Shadow Fist. I want to see Incept really engage here. They have the ultimates all up now. They've just come off cooldown after that fight. Example of lost that advantage from that fight. Still, beads are down um, on both the Kepri and the Chiron. Oh, good damage right onto Mincer, but he's going to be able to overhead kick that. Good Petrify right onto Yarpy in the back line. Gets caught out by Chappie. Sanctuary gets used up, so he's perfectly fine. Gets out of that fight. They're good Centaurus form, but it's not going to be doing too much damage. Good Blink Cataclysm right onto Edison as the Scarra's Blessing comes through. And he's out of the fight. I'm a monster. Not going to connect with anyone either, Nightfall. No, it's not. I'm a little bit behind here, unfortunately, so I can't really see what is going on, Parathus, but it seems as though that team fight was very well played from both teams. No one died. No one. No one at all. Everyone extremely low for the second time. Both Incept and Example still fighting here as if a dank bacon is going to be using that Colossal Fury form, trying to just box out Mincer as he's trying to get himself another kill. Does get out of the fight. They could stun from Panic, but it isn't going to be able to secure any kills at this point. Dang Bacon's still going ham. Yeah, and that's exactly what you want to do as a Vamana. Uh, as long as you've got health and as long as you've got mana, you want to keep going in. Especially if you have that ultimate. Uh, you could just sustain so well on team fights, and it, you can destroy the carries, as we mentioned before. 6-0 still. 25 minutes in... This is a long game. Only 10 kills in the entire game, Nightfall. This isn't something you would really see on PC. I mean, uh, usually these teams would be extremely aggressive. I like, I like Chappie, as I said before, in the picks and bans. Very aggressive, likes the front line. And we've seen him just walking out to the front of the front of the team fights, petrifying and then just doing so much damage with the Viper shot. But still pretty, I mean, I wouldn't say passive. Early game was definitely passive to say, but these late games, yeah. it's just people haven't been getting picked up. I like that both teams are fighting together. Like, no one is getting caught out. No one is... It's not 2v2. It's not no, 3v1 it's or anything. All it's always 5v5. This is this is actually fantastic to see. And, and the Xbox players know how to play this game, certainly, in this Pro League. I mean, that's why they're Pro. And this is for the semi-finals going into the grand finals still. Not, not, neither team wanting to throw Mincer is going to be doing a bit of damage. He's going to be getting his right side mid camps. Gold Fury getting started up for Incept. Does get spotted out by Chappie, however. Doesn't look like he's going to be able to contest as there's a hungry, hungry Scylla with that I'm a monster still up and available. They do decide to leech it, however, as AQ does dive over with that Somersault. Who's going to get it here? Centaurus form over the wall. 
is not going to do any damage whatsoever. I'm a monster from Yarpy. He's going to go right onto AQ. No, he's going to jump out of that. Hayton's gets himself a kill onto Panic in the meantime. And now they're forced under the tier 2 tower. Petrify onto Dostiny, but it's not going to do anything as he is a tanky Kepri. He is indeed. And just watching that uh, Petrify onto Destiny. I mean, you don't want to hit that one, that single target at all. Especially on the, on the... On the support, I mean, oh my word. Under the tower, Edison gets himself a kill right onto the return. ADC Chappie falls down. It's Yarpy though, gets himself another kill onto Salty as they take down this tier 2 tower in left. They're going to be doing a bit of damage. They have Edison to do that damage. He is a Chiron and he's pretty much finished his entire build there. He's got his chin size, his Ichabal, and he has his ass eye, his transcendence. He's I mean, everyone, really late game. Just have a look at gold in hand at the moment. 2k for Yarpy. They might be looking to back after they get this Phoenix. Yeah, they definitely should. 2k worth of gold in the bank. You really need to turn that into items because as, if, if it's gold in hand, then that's not gold in items, is it? And that's where your power comes from. But, I mean, Yarpy, Yarpy's 8-0 at this point. Gone right into the uh, Rodder to Hootie with the 2.1k gold in hand. What do you reckon he's going to be building into next? I want to see a Soul Reaver, personally. Yeah, he really should. Because then he can one-shot quickly anyone except for uh, Mincer or Salty. In our mid lane, Armour Monster gets used up. There's a Phenol Evil right onto AQ. No, he does fall down to Hayden's. However, the Cats get used up. Still in this mid lane. Everyone really wants to fight, but no objectives at this point for Incept. They shouldn't be fighting in the middle of the lane here. They have no towers other than the Tier 2 up. Yeah, and that's not enough defense. I mean, Incept are just far too far ahead, and they can pressure any lane they want to at this point. Blink Cataclysm, but it's not going to do anyone. It's not going to stun anyone, however. Yarpy Undertale is going to be forced to use those beads. Good pull right onto Mincer. The Abduct does not fall down. Still up and available as Dank Bacon goes into the Colossal Fury form. Petrify right onto two members. Chappie gets himself a kill onto Hayden's. Dank Bacon still on hot pursuit as Edison. Gets himself a double kill onto Chappie in return. Still chasing Minty. He's slowed out. Good stun over the wall onto Dank Bacon. And he's stuck on that pursuit. Edison still chasing down. Tier 2 tower is going to fall down in right a second, Nightfall. Yeah, it certainly is. And that Petrify was actually very, very good by Cappy, But he didn't have a front line. And that was something that Vision told us. Is that, yeah. <laughs> like, he is the front line for the team. And if your AD carry is the front line, then you're just going to get destroyed. I, I mean, it kind of works out for him. I like how aggressive he's playing. Uh, I would say that it's turned out for him, but granted, he's 1-4 and four at this point. But, I mean, even if he goes in the back line, just stays in the back, Petrify isn't going to do too much. And really, he's just going to end up getting caught out by Haytens, jumping over the back line, popping cats onto him, and he can't do anything at all. So, I yeah, like, like the strategy, sure. but... You can not You can trade one for one for the jungler, but yeah. not for an AD carry. That's not worth no. it at all. As an AD carry, you need to sit at the back. If you play aggressively, you should honestly just find a different role. Like, solo is perfect for people who love to just dive in the back line. If, if Chappie was on Vamana, I think this would actually be perfect <laughs> play, to be honest. It would be. It actually would be. But, yeah. I mean, he's got the carry role. I mean, you could even play ADCs in solo. Fire Giant, however, Shocking. 30 of minutes. <laughs> 30 minutes. No Fire Giant at all being contested. Why do you reckon that they've decided to go for Towers and Phoenixes over these objectives? If It's, it's more permanent. You take down a Tower, and then that Tower is not going to respawn. It also gives you the same amount of gold as both objectives. The difference is that Fire Giant gives you a huge buff, so it's always worth going for that Fire Giant. But if you think that you have any chance of losing the team fight, you sh really shouldn't risk losing Fire Giant for that. And it's exactly right for these uh, Insect versus Example. Even though these last, what, four or five fights, only one member or so has died. It hasn't really been a whole deicide sweep that we saw when um, when Yarpy got himself a quadra kill. So even if they take out one member, that's still four members, and Incept don't really want to be risking it at this point. They don't want to throw, um, like, as hard as uh, as whales, basically. <laughs> <laughs> Shots. You knew that whales could be thrown so far. 15k gold is the lead now for Incept. Uh, 20k XP. This is massive. If they throw here, I'm absolutely surprised. 
Um, sure. Especially with the way that Zilla played here in the in the mid to late game, that quadra kill, like you mentioned, is absolutely perfect. And uh, I'm keen to see it again as Bastet did to jump in there. Bastet gets himself the kill onto Chappy. They're still focusing out this tier two tower. Edison gets stunned out, but it's a good beads and sanctuary AQ. Very low at this point, it's going to fall down in a second. A Dank Bacon, Hayden still in his fight, provides a slow onto Salty. Dank Bacon still in that Colossal Fury form, chasing him down. Edison gets himself that kill with the training exercise. Tier 2 Tower falls down as Edison takes it. And now they're turning their eyes instead of the Fire Giant going right for the Phoenix. Playing the objective, boys. Picking it up next Xbox style. Oh my god, he <laughs> actually did it. Okay, so going for the Phoenix is absolutely perfect. I love what these guys are doing. They're going for... Can they end? Actually, yes they can. With four members down, Panic is the only one alive. He doesn't have enough damage. There we go. And that is GG. Very well played there by Incept. Going to be able to pick up game number one, 18 to 3. And for, for a matchup that should have been a lot closer, this was yep. not close at all. I mean, as we were being told, it would be a 50-50 game going to a best of three match. It, it didn't look too even. Um... Throughout the entire of the game, we saw very, very passive starts for both teams. And then they kind of just snowballed from the lead that they got from taking uh, those mid harpies. And then, of course, Yarpy with the gorgeous quadra kill on the monster combo. Yep. I mean, that was just that was just the the, the deciding moment of why of when Incept just took their lead and then just straight up they won that after that. Yeah, I think Yarpy Yarpy's play there was exactly what won them the game. As well as Incept knew exactly what to do with their lead. So too many times we see teams play, not know what to do with their lead once they have it, and throw, and they can't close games. Um, mm. But yeah, very, very good play there by Incept. An example for a close matchup, I want to see a, a game number three come here. So game number two is going to come right up after a few short breaks. One short break, I should say. Uh, and that will be very interesting to see. Hopefully another Quadra. Hopefully another Quadra. We'll be back after a quick break, guys. Oh, my God. 